the flood concept. Flood is a concept that attempts to put more eligible receivers into an area than there are defenders in coverage. It gets its name from its function. It floods an area of the field with the intent of putting more receivers in a zone than there are opposing players to defend it. It's typically run with three receivers in order to put the defense in conflict at a deep, intermediate, and short level. The goal is to put the defense in both a horizontal and a vertical stretch. A typical example of a flood concept is an outside vertical route, a slot out route, and a shallow flat or quick out. It gives the quarterback answers against both man and zone coverages. While there can be virtually anything tagged to the other side of the formation, a dig route is commonly tagged to the backside. This is because the X receiver will run right into the area that has been potentially voided by the Mike linebacker. One thing about Flood is that it is a true concept, as opposed to being synonymous with a particular route combination like Dragon, which commonly refers to the pairing of a slant and a flat. Flood just needs to get a receiver at each level of the defense to the same side. So the F can run the clear out, the Y runs the sail, and the Z can run a whip route to the flat. As long as the timing is there and the defense is threatened at all three levels to the same side, you've got a Flood concept. Let's go back to the original route combination. So how do we read this thing? Hmm. We read this from deep to intermediate to shallow, and then to the backside dig. Let's take a look route by route. If our receiver gets a step on the cornerback or the deep safety's coverage allows for space, we'll take a shot downfield. Usually there's a sight adjust attached to the vertical route. All sight adjust means is that the receiver will change the route being run based on how the defense or specific defenders are playing. As an example, the Z can read the corner and see if he's pressed and lined up inside, then fights for an outside release and runs a fade instead of the corner route. If the cornerback is pressed and outside, he runs the post but adjusts his angle of attack at the top of the stem based on what the safety does. If the hook curl defender buzzes to the flat, we hit the sail. If the hook curl defender gets depth to take away the sail or we get any sort of pressure, just take the check down flat. This flat route can help be an outlet for getting the ball out quickly, as well as helping to expose who the flat defender is. Lastly, if we get coverage that takes away each of the routes somehow, or we just don't like the look, we can hitch and reset to look to the backside dig in the space underneath the safety for a catch and run. One variation is weak flood, called Y cross in some offensive systems. The idea is the same, except we are attacking the opposite side of the field. We have our deep route. This through or over route needs to get underneath the Sam linebacker and over the Mike linebacker. And our shallow route. The flat route draws away the flat defender and the over route can serve a dual purpose by helping the backside dig come open as well. The use of play action can help draw the second level defenders in for a moment and open up that through route. Flood is a terrific concept with a lot of answers built in for the quarterback. Okay, that was a lot of chalk dust. Let's head over to the film room and see Flood in action. We've got the Chiefs at home versus the Jaguars in their week five win from 2018. It's third and 10, and they're just across midfield at the start of the second quarter. We have our X at the bottom of the screen in tight, our quarterback in the gun, the H lined up in a far position away from the Y, our F in the slot, and our Z out wide. By the way, this is Travis Kelsey down here, number 87. He's a tight end, but he's in the X position. We also have Chris Connolly and Sammy Watkins and Tyreek Hill. I don't know how the Chiefs would label this formation, but for our purposes, we'll keep it simple and ignore the shuffling of specific player positions. We'll just keep the X, the X, the Y, the Y, regardless of who's actually in that spot. Okay, here's our flood concept. The Y is going to chip release to the flat. The F is going to run a rounded 12 yard out or sail route. And the Z is going to run a clear out post. On the backside, the X receiver is going to run an in and take advantage of any voids created by the F's out route. The defense is showing three deep with a nickel in the slot. Depending on the coverage, he's the defender we're putting in conflict. If he crashes down on the flat, we hit the out. If he gets depth to cover the F, we hit the flat underneath him. Either way, he can't be right. We also have this post alerted if we like the look. The defense can do anything at the snap. They could roll to cover three with three deep and four underneath. But a better guess might be that they are in some sort of split field coverage. Take a look at the cornerback at the bottom of the screen. He's pressed at the line of scrimmage and tight on the X. The corner and nickel to the other side are playing pretty far off. 
So if there isn't pressure coming from the backside corner or linebacker, we might get some sort of man coverage to this side and zone coverage like a quarter's look to the other, with how far off this corner is already. At the snap, the Y tries to chip the edge defender to slow him down, and the D-line stunt ends up helping us with that. Remember, flood can take some time to develop, so any extra time for the QB is always a plus. Helping to create more time for the play to develop, the back also chips the edge to the other side before releasing to the flat. He helps wreck the weak side pass rush in the process. The quarterback also dovetails to the play side, changing the launch point to line up for a better throw. Notice his helmet direction. He's reading the nickel DB. Here, our receivers are threatening at each level. At the top of the drop, you might be tempted to take the easy throw and hit the flat route, but remember, it's third and 10, and check out where the sticks are at the top of the screen. Not to mention the pass protection is holding up nicely thanks to the running back. The quarterback sees the double coverage on the post and takes a hitch. We could hit the backside dig, but there are two defenders waiting to break up the pass or to blow up the receiver short of the sticks. Then he sees the nickel start to come down to defend the first down line. He winds up and fires the ball to the F through a huge open window with plenty of grass in front of him to get that first down and a whole lot more. Let's head to our simulator and run a few scenarios. With the ball on the right hash, we're running flood to the field side to give our fade and outbreaking routes some room. Pre-snap, the defense is showing a potential split field coverage with corner off to this side and corner press to this side. At the top of our drop, it looks like the boundary side is playing quarters and the field side is playing cover two. Reading from top to bottom, our outside receiver has blown past the corner who's covering the flat and the safety is dropped back into a deep half of the field. We could hit the out route running behind the hook defender, but our Z receiver has a lot of room to get a chunk of yards. Too bad he didn't beat the safety because that could have been a house call. Here we're running flood to the boundary. The defense is showing cover two man pre-snap with the two deep safeties and the second level pass defenders pressed across the board. At the snap, the defenders turn their back to the quarterback and begin trailing their assignment. With the safeties each moving to cover a deep half of the field, this confirms cover two man. Reading from top to bottom, we see the safety is waiting in position to take away the vertical route, not to mention the corners all over the Z receiver. Our eyes come down to the hook defender, the Mike linebacker. Against man coverage, we like routes that run away from defenders. The tight end cuts toward the sideline and gains a step on the mic. And the F receiver has drawn the Sam linebacker away toward the flat, opening a window to put it on the tight end's face mask just out of reach of the defender. Again, we're running flood to the boundary side, and we have a quarter's look pre-snap. Reading from top to bottom, we see the corner off is threatening our vertical route. The Mike linebacker has inside leverage on the Y. This could help open up our tight end to the out route, but the strong safety has come down to the hook area to take it away. But if the corner is running with the Z, and the Mike and strong safety are essentially bracketing the Y, who's in the flat? It should be the Sam backer, but he's bringing pressure from the nickel spot. In reality, we would have seen the Sam backer blitzing a lot earlier since he'd be in our vision when peaking the vertical route at the snap. But I wanted to emphasize the deep to short progression of reading flood. If we get pressure, just take the easy check down throw to the flat and live to fight another down. It may not be flashy, but don't underestimate the power of a good check down. If there's space, this little three yard flat route can easily turn into 10 plus. Okay, let's head out onto the field for a through the helmet perspective. At the snap, we peek our vertical route to see if there's a shot. Then, as always, we look to the safeties to tell us what the defense is doing. The free safeties roll to the middle of the field, and the play side cornerback is backpedaling to a landmark with zone eyes, indicating cover three zone. As an added bonus, the strong safety's blitzing from the heavens, leaving a ton of green grass between him and the cornerback to hit that seven route. By the way, the phrase seven route is in reference to the basic wide receiver route tree, where the corner route is labeled as a number seven. 
One trick to recalling the numbers is to remember that odd numbers are used for outbreaking routes and even numbers are used for inbreaking routes. We'll evade the pressure in our face from the right tackle letting the edge rusher blow right by him and roll to the right, where we catch the cornerback holding his deep third of the field to cover the sail and the other defenders too far off to make a play. This gives us and our receiver plenty of room to make a big play. Here we see the safeties widen out, indicating a cover two shell. The underneath defenders are shuffling to a landmark and have zone eyes. This frame is also a good look at what the flood concept is trying to achieve with our three on two numbers advantage. We see the deep half field safety continuing to push toward the sideline, which at best means a 50-50 ball to the corner route and at worst an interception or a big hit resulting in an injury. With the Sam linebacker rushing the passer and our right tackle totally redeeming himself by picking up the block this time, the cornerback has moved way inside to cover the hook area, leaving the sail route wide open. Well, that didn't last long. 44 is just too fast for our right tackle. With pressure in our face and our deeper routes still needing more time to develop, we take our check down in the flat and let the tight end fight for the first down. The Sam linebacker has dropped into coverage, along with these defenders moving into position and the mic backer drifting over, it stands to take away our numbers advantage. So we reset our feet and look to the backside dig. We see the deep cover two safety, along with the flat and hook defenders underneath. And the mic linebacker has been pulled away by our flood routes. This allows us to hit the open window for a nice catch and run. On the strong side, we have two crossing routes. The tight end is running a drag to effectively function like the dig route from the last play, and the Z receiver is running the over or through route, aiming to get over the Mike linebacker and run to space in the defensive coverage. We'll use the play action fake to try to draw the linebackers in to create space for the over route. Our flat route has exposed the flat defender as the outside cornerback, and with the deep safeties getting so much depth, this leaves a huge open window to hit the go route for a big game. We fake the handoff and get our eyes toward our vertical route. The cornerback, behind our receivers, has not gone down to the flat, but instead started gaining depth. And these two safeties are not getting as much width as they would in a cover two shell. So we're facing a quarters look, and that can take away our vertical route. So we shift our focus to our second read in the progression, the over. We see that the Mike linebacker has moved with our eyes. So we can manipulate him, we can hold him here and hit the over route running into space right behind him. After the fake, we read our vertical route. We see that the corner is backpedaling to cover the go, and the nickel has been pulled into the flat. This linebacker looks like he's ready for the over route, but this one's gained depth, leaving space for our drag route to come open underneath him. This time, the corner has gained depth to take away the vertical route. These two look like they can jump the drag route, this linebacker looks ready for the over route, and this safety is rolling to the middle of the field. We can just hit our flat route and live to fight another down. Let's recap. Flood is typically a three receiver concept that attacks the defense at all three levels, with a backside route that fills the void left by the defense chasing the other routes. We read from the deepest route to the shortest route, then to the backside route. It's a great concept that gives the quarterback answers against man coverage with the runaways and against zone coverage with the different levels of the routes. Okay, grab your helmet and go flood some defenses.